Yes, I'm here. We're uh, starting live a little early and um, sitting in my office and watching my wife drive back up right now, driving up the driveway. Anyway, hopefully I'm out there. Do y'all, uh, I don't know if anybody's able to pick it up or haven't seen. There we go. Doug is watching. All right, I got one. How are you, sir? Good. So I got five people. There we go. All right, so we're starting out pretty good. And um, tonight's kind of, I'm kind of kicked back, relaxing in my office. Miss Tilly, congratulations, by the way. <laughs> I'm telling Mark just did such a great job. And uh, it was awesome, awesome watching the live today, especially when he caught that giant. But I, uh, I went and, you know, I was over in uh, Kissimmee last night, staying at a friend's house, and then um, just drove home this morning. And uh, so it's, uh, I'm tired. I'm, let's just say I'm tired. But those guys are catching them, and they get to go back and go fishing, which is where I would like to be. But, you know, I didn't, uh, I didn't catch them. You know, and a lot of that is... Uh, is thank you, Miss Tilly. Anyway, um, a lot of that has to do with focus. You know, when you to to do well in a tournament, you have to focus on the task and not be you know preconceived this or or, or what. And I kind of had some um, you know preconceived notions about you know what to do and and it uh, you know getting on the schoolies and I and I worked some schoolies and had a terrible first day just losing them um, and so you know day day two I did a little bit of that and then just started scrambling and it just everything just kind of fell apart so when you you know you zig when you should have zag and stuff like that but uh, let me answer a quick uh, question here Lindsay goes uh, what's your favorite snack on the boat and I keep all kinds of um, Crockett Creek beef jerky, uh, especially the spicy stuff, you know, the jalapeno, honey jalapeno, all kinds of good stuff like that. And uh, I also keep Cliff Bars, and those are kind of my two kind of go-to, just munch and go. I tell you one that I kind of like, too, is a, uh, I do a, uh, they make this tuna, you know, just a quick little tear-open pack of, of tuna that is buffalo chicken and boy i mean buffalo uh, flavored tuna and it's really good so anyway um yeah so that's kind of what i eat on the boat when i'm out there and and uh drink lots of water in fact i got me a big old yeti of water right here right now one thing that happens you get out there and you can get dehydrated pretty quick and so um you know, you just have to, if you're going to keep any type of mental focus, you need to fuel your body and you need to drink a lot, a lot. So, you know, that's what we do. So anyway, so if anybody has any question, I'll answer some questions and, and, uh, we get a handful of people on here and, and, uh, probably give you a little bit about my story, especially a lot of you probably heard that, um, you know, I just got finished with cancer surgery, uh, kidney cancer, about six weeks ago, yesterday, or is, that's right, yeah, yesterday, six weeks ago. So, um, and you know, I I uh, I knew it out on the boat. I wasn't quite, you know, a hundred percent, but I still that's no excuse for for not catching them, especially in my home state. Man, that's my home state. You know, I should be catching them. So. Uh, Anyway, um, so, um, yeah, if I'm not getting any, how am I doing on my recovery? I'm doing real well. Uh, I've got, uh, in fact, we'll pack up here. I'll be here for about a week and then we'll go to Chickamauga for the super tournament and the FLW super tournament. And that'll be really fun. Uh, and, and then I get home for about another week and, uh, or thereabouts and then we're gonna head maybe a week and a half and we're heading to uh, Champlain which is amazing so I get to have some cooler weather and great smallmouth fishing which I'm really looking forward to Chickamauga big bass smallmouth fishing in Champlain man and then we I think we go to another 
uh, FOW Super Tournament on the river up in La Crosse and then to Detroit. So, you know, the rest of the season is going to be a really, really fun one. And, um, all right, I got another question here. I know we're past the spawn, but what's your favorite lure color for, for that, for spawning? So, uh, pretty much white, you know, I mean, white. And the only reason for that is, is that you can see it. So I catch them on black. I catch them on like black with a chartreuse tail. I've used chartreuse. I've used all kinds of different colors, uh, natural colors and all that kind of stuff. And they all work. But the thing about white is when you throw it out there, you can see that bait very well. When a fish eats it, it disappears. So you can see that, you know, oh, he's just got it by the claw. Like I can see most of the bait out of his mouth and part of it gone. So you know that he doesn't really have the hook in his mouth. And in our tournaments, you got to catch him in the mouth. So you've got to make sure they eat it. And um, so anyway, that's kind of a kind of why I like white. But trust me, uh, any color works. I can tell you that I have seen, boy, I've seen some situations where, you know, and we had um, a lot of uh, times when we would fish with other pros, right? And they would be fishing side by side. So they'd be thrown on the same bed. And all of a sudden you see that fish turn and react to their bait. And you're like, oh my gosh, it's that color. So sometimes color makes a big difference. So I usually have a whole bunch of baits and colors differences out on the boat. And uh, so that I can throw, you know, I can throw a, a worm on it. I can throw a big worm. I can throw a, a lizard. I can throw, you know, a, a, a rage bug, which is probably my favorite of all. And and little things like that to, uh, there's my man, Terry Chuck. Anyway, um, guy that led me to Jesus right there. Um, and so, um, you you know you just have to have a variety and and sometimes they just they want something different you know a different color or a different bait so uh, and i use all of those doug just saying cross senkos whatever well i use the ocho i use cross uh i use lizards big worms big worms can get them a lot of times a big bait can really fire up a big big female and uh get her to, to tee off and and eat when you know you try all kinds of other things and that just doesn't work so and so anyway, that's a, that's kind of a, a rundown on some of my, some of my, uh, stuff. I think Lindsay also asked, uh, says, does, does my family get to travel with you a lot? No. Now when, they, when I was younger, they were younger, I didn't have kids or when my kids were, you know, below five, uh, they traveled all the time, went to every tournament and, but once I got kids and they got to school age, then that changed because then they're in school and my wife was there with them in school. And then, um, you know, now I've got grandkids. And so when my wife travels, it's usually a summertime and it's like her and uh, my grandson will come and they'll go to a tournament. So they may go to the one in in Champlain because maybe we can just go smallmouth fishing afterwards. I know my grandson Bryce would love, I mean, absolutely love to catch, um, uh, you know, some big smallmouth. And, uh, we were supposed to have a tournament, uh, the Bass Pro Tour, Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour was supposed to have a tournament on, um, you know, Thousand Islands uh, at the St. Lawrence River in June this month. And, it would have just been stellar. And of course this COVID kind of wiped all that out. So needless to say, that was gonna be my grandson's treat for the for the year is off school and and uh, go to New York. And now it's uh, off school and we'll go to Champlain and, and it'll be pretty good too. So it's, it's all really good. So anyway, um, as a, as the, you know, kind of questions are not rolling real fast. I'll just go into my story a little bit, especially with this, you know, cancer deal. So, um, Terry, who's on here and, uh, he, he, man, he made me cry the other day, Terry, you did that. Um, he was, uh, he's got a great story. If you want to go to his Facebook page, you know, when we're done and watch, or if you have a second phone, you want to look at it while we're here. But he uh, related a story that he was in, I think it was a Walmart, and uh, noticed this young man looking at fish and tackle. And, and um, 
so he jumped in and anyway it was a, a tremendous tremendously touching story and just shows his heart but that's the man that led me to Jesus Christ and and um and I, I remember the day vividly because it was over a bowl of hot sour soup in a Chinese restaurant down in Okeechobee and uh, actually in Clewiston, but uh, Lake Okeechobee. And um, so Terry is very instrumental in who I am and where I'm at in my life. Um, so I accepted Jesus Christ January 22nd, 1990, um, you know, with Terry and I. And you know, it's, uh, it's been amazing because it's the single most important aspect of my life. Uh, there's nothing greater than a relationship with Jesus Christ. And so it influences everything, everything you do and how you react and how you treat and how you do things. And, um, uh, so it's, it's really, really special. I'll answer Paul's real quick jump off the story here comes Paul Cooper asked me being a Bass Pro Tour pro now or are you going to miss fishing the Bass Master Classic no um, I, I tell you I've never experienced a fishing challenge that is more exciting and harder than to do what we do at the Bass Pro Tour and the live cameras and and knowing you know that that you have this much weight and they have this much weight and you need this to do it and it's it's just the most intense it's like a sport should be uh when you're driving around a nascar track it's you're not doing it under the secrecy of darkness you know where that leader is and you know what you need to do to do it <laughs> and, and and it's the same thing in a basketball game you know what the team has what your to you what your your opponent has if you're playing golf you know what your opponent has and so no instead of having a flip of the coin like uh, I, I had one that I would won hands down at Toho and um, I think I may have finished second uh, I thought I needed a I came in in 10th place thought I needed a seven or eight pounder to to win the tournament I hooked her on a bed and and she pulled off and I kept looking for another big one and, and fishing her a little bit more and all I needed was uh, a three pounder and I had it one hand down and I ran over two or three of them um, and and so you know, or four or five of them out there that I just said, no, it's not going to do me any good when it would have. So, you know, how, how many times do you win a tournament by just, you know, luck of who does what rather than knowing what you got to do and working real hard and getting it done. So no, I'm, uh, I am so happy and uh, that we started it as anglers. We started that tour. We started the major league fishing and started that tour. And and um, and we, we offered all of that to Bass a long time ago, and they, they didn't take us up on it. So we did it ourselves. So anyway, enough said about that. Let me get back to about me. And, uh, um, you know, and then I'll try to come back and answer a bunch of questions. So uh, anyway, so, you know, I accepted Jesus Christ and, and – uh, and and it's just amazing what happened in my life, meaning the things that would come along. You know, my, my dad got cancer, and and Jesus led me through that. And I mean, when you say led me through it, it's amazing because, you know, hey, I'm a cancer survivor, and I guarantee most of the people on here have been affected by cancer some way, somehow. And and it's it's a really, really, Mr. Al... Good, to, good to see you on here, buddy. Anyway, so, um, you know, cancer's not a nice thing. So when my dad got it, you know, I, I, in fact, um, dad had read a book which was really cool on the power of prayer, and they had only given him like three months. His lung cancer is going to be really quick and all that, and and we went to a focus meeting. And I, I remember it was Jay, and I think it was Mark Davis, and and um, a handful of us just just stayed around after the meeting and put hands on my dad and prayed with him, and um, and he donated that book to uh, to the to the focus uh, group. And what was really cool is he he was around three years later. I mean, this is lung cancer that he was supposed to have been gone instantly and. Three years later, he's filming a show with me, uh, my startup season for one more cast. Um, but anyway, I just had one prayer. And why I said, you know, Jesus led me through this is because I had one prayer for dad is that, you know, be merciful, my dad, because it's a, it's a, 
you know, cancer's just bad. And um, so the, you know, when he died, let me tell you how merciful he was. And he died, he was up that night. He was uh, singing a little bit, dancing with my mom, which is his wife. And they were talking old times. They lay down, went to sleep, and he died in his sleep. That's that's the God we serve, he, and just amazing. So um, getting back, that's who Jesus Christ is. It, he, he gives you the opportunity to make heaven happen right here on earth. I know we're going to be all in heaven when, when we go, but it takes and makes this part of our life uh, that it makes it that much better that we can experience a little piece of it with with him and to me that's incredible it is just is just what he does and you know so i and i've told this over i've told this at al's at some of his meetings and stuff like that that um you know i i i had this this deal with with my heart so i had triple bypass and i tell that story that you know i had a little old man come up to my boat and and uh get me to do something that you know to do it just ended up having so many different complicated things there that when it all came down and they found that i was blocked 100 percent blocked in both sides of my of my main arteries the the left and right coronary that it, you, all you could do is go, oh my gosh, they found this in a checkup. I didn't have a heart attack. I didn't have anything. And they did a triple bypass all because of a little old man that came up to my boat. And when you look at all the things you go, it, it, there, you can't say that it's a coincidence when there's so many factors that, that went into that. And, uh, and Al's probably got that recorded and, you know, cause I've said that story and, and most of my talks and then I go to a church, I tell that one. And, um, because it's so powerful to know how God works, you know, sometimes he'll shake you and he'll tell you, you know, and you, you feel it. Uh, other times he's putting somebody right there with you. He's putting somebody in front of you that's going, hey, you probably ought to look at this or you ought to do this. And and you think it's, you know, just a buddy or whatever, and, and it's God talking to you. So um, it, it's really cool. I got here's, here's like, like uh, uh, this is a really funny one. So I got asked to do this talk at a, at a Southern Baptist outdoor ministry deal in wherever the Southern Baptist deal is in North Carolina. And... Um, I get this message on my answering machine and he said, I want to talk to you about coming and speaking to us, you know, a bunch of ministers. And I went, Oh, I'm listening to this. And I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm a fisherman. I don't speak to preachers. I, I talk to fishermen, but no, this preachers talk to us. So I didn't call him back. Well, I'm on an airplane and he, lo and behold, they bumped me up to first class. And I'm like, wow, this is nice. I'm in first class. And the guy sitting next to me, I go, well, hey, how are you doing? What do you do? And, and he goes, oh, I start ministries all over the world. And I went, well, let me ask you a question. So I asked him this question. I said, what do you think about this? I got this message on my answer machine. Oh, you need to do this. You need to do this. Absolutely, you need to do this. And I'm like, uh. <laughs> so I still do that. Well, guess what? I didn't go call him back. It happened again, and then it happened again on the third time. I said, okay, Lord, I, I understand. I understand. I called him back, and it was an awesome deal. It, it blessed me immensely to go do that. So that's the type of thing that God does. He just he just puts things in place. So, so I mean, let's, let's bypass all my great... I'll have great stories because Jesus is just awesome, right? And I have lots of stories about that. And, uh, but I sit back and I look at my current situation, right? So I had kidney cancer. Well, how do you, you know, everybody asked me what, how'd you know you had kidney cancer and what were the symptoms? Cause everybody wants to know, cause if they have it, they want to know, Hey, how do you find out? And I'm like, I, I didn't know. So here's the story. Um, my doctor says, we really like to get your cholesterol. Now, remember I got high cholesterol, which is why I had the heart issue and all the rest of it. So he says, I really like to get your cholesterol down a little more. So we're going to change you from this drug to this drug. I said, okay, we'll try it. And we did. 
and everything's going along good. He said, oh yeah, that's, you know, your cholesterol's coming down, but your creatinine level is gone way up here. It shouldn't be. And uh, so we, we, it shouldn't be the drug. So let's just look, let's see what's going on. See if there's something creating that, you know, and so they do a scan. So here it is, just accidental. We happen to be going along, you know, life is normal, and there it is. So they do the scan, and they see this little spot on my kidney, and they, eh, don't worry about it, right? And so then they end up checking the, uh, finding out that the drug was causing it, because they took me off the drug. And they go, okay, but here's this spot that they found. And they kind of measured it. And they said, we probably need to check that because it's like 90 something percent of these are cancer. So they found it in an accidental scan because they did some drug deal, right? Some deal where they changed my, my medication that I take. And, and, and so you sit back and you go, yeah, that's coincidence, that's accidental. But when you look at life and you look at all the things that go on daily and all the stuff that has happened, I refuse to believe in coincidence anymore. <laughs> all I know is that I know who's in charge. And so who's in charge goes, hey, if we do this, they're going to find this and they're going to take it. And guess what? You get to talk on Fishers and Men Facebook page and you get to share your story. And so, you know, I look at this and, and I go, that's how awesome Jesus is. And, and in this day and time, it's the biggest thing that, that has changed in our world is how they have tried and have basically taken Jesus out of everything. I mean, everything. So I don't care what it is. They, they, they don't, they don't want it. And what's really amazing and, and it says it in the Bible, it says, Jesus did not come to condemn. He came to bring ever, to, to bless you, bring everlasting life. Anyway, he's not, he's not a condemner. He's not one that says, no, no, don't do, no. It, you know, you have all the rules in the Bible. I mean, you got, you got it. This is what you should do. But he pretty much put two of them in there. You know, it's love your brother, love God above everything else and love your brother like you love, you know, like God and the same thing, just love. And it's, that's what the Bible is, is about love. And, and, and it's not to condemn, not to, to, to condemn somebody to hell or anything like that. It's to bless them. And, and so I, I just sit back and go, there's nothing greater than to have Jesus in your life. And fortunately, I met a guy back in 19, I think I met him probably in about 87, 86, 87, somewhere in that late deal before, uh, uh, you know, before I ever got saved that, that, uh, he was out on the tour and that's Terry Chup. And so, um, blessed me and, and, uh, and saved me and yes, and, and, you know, my whole family saved. So that's really cool. And then I get to share that with other people and, and that's really cool. So, uh, it's it's special. I went and talked at a at a big beast feast in Texas this, this year. An amazing thing had thousands of people there. And to sit back and see because the the pastor calls me, the preacher calls me or texts me and goes, "Praying for you, man." And 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 let me tell you, so and so just came in, got baptized, and he accepted Christ that night. And so when you hear that and you know what what. God has done and and bless somebody else that's that's just that's the ultimate so um yeah so i i'm I'm very thankful for Terry I'm very thankful most thankful for Jesus Christ and uh and that's really like I said the greatest thing you can do and I don't care especially in this day and time because I don't think anybody questions nobody it says absolutely nobody knows the day or time when Jesus is coming back, but he's coming back. But if you read the Bible, it tells you all the things that are going to go on, right? This is going to happen. This is going to happen. And guess what? It's all going on right now. There's Wilson, man. I haven't seen you in a long time, man. I get, I get all these guys on here. This is cool. Anyway. So if you're looking at, and you read your Bible 
and you see all this stuff that's going on, then you kind of feel like it's it's possible. Now remember, you know, for for them, you know, for Jesus, a, a day is can be a thousand years. You don't know, okay? But it's still getting close. And so my thing is, yeah, don't wait. You know, if you have an opportunity, and there's there's an opportunity for you to accept Jesus Christ, do it. Simple prayer, do it. And, and uh, you know, it's just got to confess that you're a sinner and say, Lord, I want you to take control and I want you to, to lead me and, and, and I turn from my sin and accept your death on the cross and, and your resurrection is payment for my sin. And, and you do that and you put Jesus in your heart, it's, it's eternity, you know, and nobody can take that away from you. That's between you and Jesus Christ. So it's a simple, simple prayer. Do it. I highly recommend. And um, anyway, so I'm going to go here real quick, and I'm going to go back and see some of these questions. I had a question back here real slow. And um, what's the focus group you keep referring to? That's Fellowship of Christian uh, Anglers, uh, I think is what it was. If, uh because it wasn't F O C U S F O C A anyway, I think it was A S Angler Society. Anyway, Terry could probably log in on that too, because he ran that thing for a long time. And um yeah. Mike goes, MLF has me on the edge of the seat the entire time. It's unbelievable how good that is. It really is. And you know, and I, I don't mean any disrespect to anybody or any tour or whatever. Bass paved the way for all of us to do this. And, and Ray Scott, uh, amazing individual. Uh, but we, we knew there was a better way to do this. And, and that's why we pitched it to him. I should say we, Boyd, pitched it to uh, Bass and, and, you know, got shot down. But the bottom line is... Um, that the point is, is that it's a much, much better product and it's a much tougher one because it's not just five fish. You know, we used to fish, uh, gosh, I used to fish a 15 fish limit and then they cut us to 10 and then I think they cut us to seven and they went from seven to five. And every time you bring that limit down and make it smaller, then you add a big fish. You catch a big fish, you do really good. You don't catch that big fish, and you're kind of in the pack, right? And so um, this takes that away from that because you're catching, weighing, and releasing them right there in the water. So the you know the the fish is much healthier, much better off. Uh, no way ends. You know everybody's catching them, and you, there's no limit. So you don't have a limit that, that says, "Hey, I got to quit," you know, or or I've caught all I can catch. So anyway, that's yeah, that's MLF. It's really good. Love that. Love that format. Uh, Danny East goes, and I'd say Danny's right here. He goes, uh, if you could fish five tournaments in a row in Florida, which lakes in which months? <laughs> Woo! Five tournaments in a row. Well, I would I would probably say. You know, Okeechobee in December, maybe uh, January, right in that time frame. It's amazing. I could just follow the next month and go to the Kissimmee chain, and uh, probably the next month the Harris chain, and uh, then I might even see. Now I'd love to have two in a row. You know, not even on months, but. Uh, you know, like two in January, because St. John's is ridiculous in January at times. The Lake George just gets, you know, just sick how good it can be. And um, <clears throat> that's our main bodies of water. We have Okeechobee, we have Harris Chain, we have Kissimmee Chain, and we have St. John's River. And uh, so then you have some little, you know, smaller lakes. And, and I don't know that they're big enough to have a, a major tournament with uh, – Bass Pro Tour, there's only 40 guys out fishing. So you could probably have one in, uh, at any one time, 40 guys are on the body of water. So you could have it in a lot of different places. And, uh, and so that's, that's a distinct possibility to be able to do that. Um, all right. So I'm zipping on down here. Who is on the pro that everyone wants to beat fishing? Wow. I'm going to tell you, you know, the guy, we have some incredible anglers. I, I was listening to the live broadcast today, um, uh, the Bass Pro Tour, and there's like three or four of them that have made a check in like every 
or made the, the knockout round, which is coming up tomorrow, made it in like, you know, 13 of 14 events. Uh, one guy I think has got them in all of them. But it's how amazing is that? But you're looking at the Jacob Wheelers and those guys that are just incredible. I mean, just in incredible anglers, incredible sticks. Um, and, you know, that's he's probably about the best there is right now. Kevin's amazing. You know, he's out there. Uh, Ayler. Uh, I mean, they just keep coming. And, and um, uh, it's, yeah, Justin Atkins. I mean, we got all the all the greats from FLW and Bass, I mean, and are all together in the major league. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's um, the way I look at it. When I was younger, it was always like, yeah, I'm, uh, you know, I you know, just work real hard and go fishing. Now, I just try to make a check and, and go on if I can make one. I, I made them uh, the first time I was at Eufaula, and I didn't do very good. But the next two, I made checks, Okeechobee and, and, uh, and Lake Fork in Texas. And I'm like, I made the knockout round, was feeling good. And then COVID hit and just took us out and so this was the first tournament back and I did not do what I'd like to have done and, and made another one so um you know I'm I'm at 50 percent now two out of four and that's kind of my normal about where I'm at you know career wise so um I look forward to getting to Chickamauga hopefully making one there and uh and then the next you know Bass Pro Tour and and uh, working hard, so I, I don't have this vision of going out and and you know trying to beat somebody. My vision is to go out there and and figure out the fish. And when you figure them out, it's wonderful. I mean, when you know, and, and that's you know, like at Texas, you know, and and Okeechobee, you know that hey man, if I'm doing this, I'm going to get the bites and I'm going to get the get the deal. And Okeechobee was flipping for me and pitching and and uh, and, <laughs> and so. Um, here Blake goes right here. We'll be having a focus fellowship of Christian Angler Society meeting at the super tournaments. Great. And, um, and so, uh, when, uh, getting back to that, I know what I was doing. And so when you figure out the fish and you dial in and you're really going at it, it's not about beating somebody. It's about beating the fish and catching them and catching them and catching them. I want to catch the next one. I want to catch the next one. I ought to be right here and make that pitch make the right hook set, get him, you know, and catch him. And, and then you, you feel good. And, and if you do everything right and you beat everybody, it's amazing. If you beat five of them, that's, that's good. If you beat, you know, three quarters of the field, it, it's all relative. It's that you have to execute right. So day one at, at Toho, I executed terrible. I mean, when I say terrible, I'm looking for schoolers. So when you're, I'm throwing a topwater bait, sexy dog, Throwing a Strike King Sexy Dog, and I'm looking for busts. So I'm not paying attention to my bait, and I hear a slight bloof, and I look back, and my bait floats up, and I'm like, are you kidding me? Usually they get hooked. I mean, this is TK310s, Trocar trebles that are so sharp that they just bite them, they get hooked. And, and, and yet they were just messing with it, and I miss fish after fish after fish. Some of them blew a big hole. Some of them didn't. Uh, like you'd hook them, and then you'd get them part way of the boat, and they come un unhooked, and you're like, really? I, I didn't lose any in the practice, none. In fact, I, I, th that's been my bait that I've been fishing all off time. You know, before uh, we, I had surgery, after I had surgery, you don't have to set the hook hard. You throw it out there, boom, they eat it, and you kind of pull back, and you're good. And so anyway, it's one of these things I don't lose any. And then all of a sudden, I'm, it's every fish is gone, and then you lose them on this and that, and anyway, so um, one of those deals. Dick, by the way, no chemotherapy. They took out, so the cool thing about kidney cancer is that they took out a piece of the kidney, and they got all the cancer, so it's it's gone. So right now, I'm cancer-free that, that we know about. But the bottom line is they will come back in three months and I'll have a scan and they'll check me. And then it's another three months and then it's six months and then it's six months for a little bit and then it comes to a year. And so they just keep monitoring you. But right now, no chemo, no radiation, no nothing. And we still praying heavily for Aaron. He's going through a tough time. So always, always remember, keep Aaron in our prayers. Um, 
He said, Chuck says here, which is my favorite bait. I don't know that I have one. I can tell you I love fishing topwater. I mean, that's a sexy dog, a sexy frog. If I'm throwing a topwater bait, it's fun because, you know, you're you're working a bait, and then the, you get that explosion, that blow up on it, and you're like, oh, my gosh, it's just it's really really cool so uh so this is this is my story too so the the second day which was yesterday i'm fishing and i'm around my school and and i'm pitching through some head of head of uh heads of hydrilla and i see this splash and it just didn't look like a bass splash it was kind of a slash you know it's like a garfish would slap at something and i said that kind of looked like a garfish but you know i got my top water bait right there well all of a sudden, a bluegill, and I mean a big and bigger than my hand, comes blasting out of the water, hits the hits the thing, shoots off again, gets knocked up. Well, by that time, I've engaged my reel. I made a stellar cast. I mean, like right there. This bluegill now, you could tell he quit flopping. He was in there and he's like stunned. And he comes down and he hits. My bait hits at almost exactly the same time, probably eight to ten inches behind him right i jerk it once the fish has got the bluegill bluegill's gone and my bait's sitting there and i'm like really and this is a big bass and i'm like really that's my luck like you know one quarter of a second too late so so anyway but is that isn't that awesome i mean just watch a big old giant bass eat something like that and um so yeah do i have favorite baits I, I mean i love my thunder crickets i love you know the the bladed jigs i love swim jigs i really don't but top water to me is man i love if i can do that i'm a happy man so i get another one here that says uh, how do i like the new two pound, two pound scoreable bass i do like it at florida is really really tough because florida is traditionally is a small fish you know it's one and a half one and three quarter 115 114 stuff like that and then a seven pounder or a six like that big one that, that eight there so you know um it's one of those things where i do like it i think it really um it really makes you work, you know, to do that two pound scoreable. So I, I am in favor of it. I mean, and so I, I like it. It's good. Um, got no problem, you know, just one of those deals. So, uh, with MLF, do you stay with a bite or try to trade up the bigger fish? <clears throat> if you're getting scoreables, since we went to the two pound minimum, those scoreable fish are, uh, very, special because it's so easy to catch and i shouldn't say it's easy it's never easy it seems like you catch more of those pound eight pound seven pound four pound set you know that deal so you know to when you get a two you go yes i got a two and so um and you could see it in every one of the guys there that was fishing today every one of them so do you try to trade up see we get to weigh every fish so there's no trading there's no like i take this one out of the live well let him go and put this one in we don't do that in fact we don't even use our live wells we let them go right then but you have a scoreboard that you get the total weight of your fish so if that fish weighed two and a half i get two and a half pounds i let it go the next fish, I have no limit. So every single fish counts, which means there's no let up. It, it means there's no time when you can go, I've got this. You know, I've got it in the back. Now, Skeet got to. Congratulations to Skeet. Uh, because he caught so many, he could turn around and go, hey, this, you know, I've whapped them and I'm good. So anyway, so no, we don't really try to trade up. We do try to do things to get bigger fish at times. You know, throw a bigger bait. Uh, throw a you know a big jig or something like that or go flipping and know that you're probably not going to get as many bites but they're they're probably going to be you know the right bite so um so here it is are there situations where casting parallel to the bank is more efficient uh, than casting perpendicular absolutely in fact this situation we were just in we're fishing grass lines uh like kissimmee grass where it's sticking out of the water and you can go right down the edges and and do that i was fishing a um a line of cabbage so it's a, a kind of a green leafy cabbage looking plant and that's what it's called it's called cabbage that's floating on top and it's banked up on one side and 
and I'm throwing my top water right down the edge of it. So I am up against it and I'd flip when it was deep and then I would throw that top water when I'd know that it was a little bit shallower out in front. And I caught some really nice fish doing that, especially in practice. Uh, in the tournament, I ended up catching, catching. Uh, well, here's a, here's a, you want to know how, how <clears throat> I don't usually admit my stupidity, but I am stupid, so I do admit it. But so, uh, in fact, I'm a great, hey, there's my grandson watching, Bryce Grigsby is watching, there we go. Anyway, and, and Jackie's in there, that's a, uh, that's Jack Wingate's daughter. Jack Wingate, legend, uh, owned Wingate's Lunker Lodge. Uh, tremendous place. I have a lot of great memories from down there. My first tournament was on uh, out of uh, Lake Seminole. So anyway, I get to look at that, but I'll get back to this. So per casting perpendicular and parallel. Um, <clears throat> so bringing it right down the edge, they would come out of that mat, uh, that cabbage, and grab the bait. And so, yes, there are plenty of times where you want to do that. Sea walls, Anytime that you have an edge like that, then it's a lot more efficient to keep it there, uh, you know, right next to the to the cover that you got. So, uh, how long have I had my mustache? <laughs> uh, I think I might have been 16 or 17, and it's been there. I shaved it off my senior year, and it was gone for, what, you know, a few months before it grew back. But, yeah, so... Yeah, long time. I'm an old guy. <laughs> it's a long, long, long time. Anyway, uh, oh, I love this. So uh, John goes, what a joy it was to be your official at Conroe and Table Rock. Yeah, that was some fun. Um, and uh, I see Rich is on here. Rich, is, it, he makes rods, fishing rods. Great, uh, great guy. I'm looking at this. And Chris, I interviewed Jack once. He said some idiot showed up at our tournament with a 35 horsepower. He said he, he thought, I'm trying to get this to see some, thought he, <laughs> he would kill somebody with a 35 horse. That's funny. Anyway, <laughs> Chris is our as well spoken mentors. If you don't know Chris Wells, he 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 is our man. And uh, and uh, so anyway, he he delivered a great message at our tournament and I did not hear his message. I assume you delivered one today, uh, maybe yesterday. I don't know because uh, BASS is going on at the same time at Lake, uh, is it Ufala, I believe. So uh, so he's our our bass chaplain for both, uh, both uh, tours. So it's really good. Man, I tell you, there's nothing better, um, first off, to be part of you know, community of, of Jesus Christ, you know, that's the big thing. That family is huge and it's important, but it's great to have the support of somebody that can help you. If you need help question, if you have questions about, Hey, should I, or shouldn't I, Hey, I'm struggling with this. Hey, what, what can I do here? You know, the Bible, you know, Bible is your ultimate source. But somebody like Chris is such a major help. Same thing with Terry. You know, when, uh, Terry was on tour with us for a long time, and he was one of those guys that could always help you in any situation, and that's and that's really special. So, um, how do young anglers attract sponsors before they become great fishermen? <clears throat> that's probably the hardest thing. The greatest thing about our sport, and I shouldn't say great, but one of the coolest things about it. Uh, when I started, it was only, you know, you just had, uh, you did have Operation Bass, which was the Red Man Tournament Trail uh, back then, and you had bass. And that's pretty much all you had. You had a couple local tournaments here and there. Um, but now we have junior angler clubs. You have high school fishing clubs. Lots of them. Lots and lots and lots. And then they graduate from high school and they get scholarships to college fishing. So some of them give them full scholarships. Some of them give them part scholarships. Uh, but imagine that, getting a scholarship. Go fishing and, and get your college education. To me, that's exceptional. So what you have now is because there's so many college teams. In fact, I, I took on a job. Uh, of helping coach uh, a college team just north of us here in uh, out of Lake City. <clears throat> and um, so being a part of that 
is there's like you know three or four of us that are that are you know heading that up and each each one of us have a little bit different duties uh as coaches but what's really cool is uh there are so many college teams now and they all are working towards sponsorship so the sponsors are getting hammered by these all over so it 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 really is a little bit harder to get sponsorship than it was in my day because there's so many more um and and that's it's a good thing in the sense that the sport's progressing it's a little tougher thing to you know if you're trying trying to make it as a young angler so um <clears throat> anyway so that's kind of kind of the deal you know you just have to work hard i'm gonna tell you what i did um I would tell a sponsor, anybody that I like their products and I use their products and, and I'm doing, I'd say, listen, I love your product. Um, I, I would like to be associated with you. I'd like to work for you. Um, uh, let me just work for you for a year and show you what I do. And if you like what I'm doing, I, I would like, you know, to get paid at some point. And so I literally would work for companies for free. And, you know, they might give me a little bit of product or give me a percentage off or whatever. And then I'd work for them and, and you do articles, you know, you'd get an outdoor rider, you, you catch it fish and you take him fish in and you get, get it in print or you win a tournament on their baits or their lures or their line and you get that all in print and then you send it to them and then they would, you know, go, Hey man, this guy's really, really working for us. And so let's let's put him on staff, you know, let's put him on a, a sponsorship deal. So that's kind of what I did in the days of getting it. So it wasn't like I fish. So give me, it was more, uh, let me show you what I can do. And so that's, that's kind of the deal. Um, and that's what I think is still probably important to, to do something. It's not about what, you know, it's kind of like, <clears throat> it's not about what you're doing in fishing. It's what can you do for that business? If, if you're just, you know, using the baits or getting baits free or whatever, and you're not selling baits for them, not making a dent in the bottom line, then it's probably not a very good situation for the, for the manufacturer to help you out. In other words, you need to be helping them too. So not just them helping you, you have to help them, which means generating sales. So, uh, how old were you when you accepted Jesus as your savior? I got to figure that out because it was 1990. I was born in 56, so um, that is going to bring me up to, math. I was what, 30, is that about, come on, who's good with math, do that, uh, somebody's got to do that, anyway, you figure it out, so, um, so I was born in 56 and accepted in 1990, so that would be like 30 four years old. That sounds right for me. Anyway, close in there. What do you think? Did I do my math right? Anyway, y'all will double check that. And, uh, and Dick says, which lake do you like better? Rayburn or Toledo Bend? <sighs> Man, that's tough. I'm going to say Rayburn. I'm going to say Rayburn. And, uh, there we go. I get it from, from fishers of men themselves. 34. I was 34 when I accepted Jesus Christ. Um, so yeah, I think Rayburn, I won three BASSs on Rayburn. And, um, and so that was, uh, th that's a special, always going to be a special lake for me. And, and, uh, Toledo is a fun lake. It's, I, it's much, I think it's much more varied in other words, you got so much more ledge fishing and, and different stuff at Toledo where the one in, um, you know, Rayburn is, is just got a lot of shallow and a lot of good stuff, got the grass edges. You still have all the ditches and the, and the ledges, but that, that shallow fishing at Rayburn can be spectacular, but both of them are good. So I'm looking over here. Uh, I'm always fun to watch you on the water. I hope I didn't miss any questions. If you have a question and I didn't answer it, you can type it in now. And, um, and, uh, other than that, that's, uh, I'm kind of running out of cool stuff to, to talk about, but you know, what do you think of Lake Havasu? Wow. We got to fish that a few years ago. Incredible lake. So when we fished it and this is, this is, and Terry, Terry remembers this. So, so Terry used to give us a, a tape. Now you remember that cause boy, back in the old days, you know, you, a tape 
you know, we had eight tracks. Everybody in Bay Area remember an eight track, big old boxy looking thing like that. And, uh, <clears throat> well, this was a cassette tape and it was Hank Parker's testimony and I stuffed it in my suitcase and we went to Havasu and it was brutal. I'm telling you, I think we, it may have taken less than six pounds or right around six pounds to make a check. Okay. That's three days. And I think I missed it by just a bit. I may have made one, but I think I just missed it by just a bit. And we're driving home and my dad's in the truck with me, traveled with me and we got everybody running. We got CBs and we talk. It got late. The talk got old. And so I, I'm sitting there my dad went to sleep and I said, you know, I got that tape and I hit the recline on my chair and felt around and there it was right there on top of my suitcase, right behind the seat. That's the way God works. He just puts things right there. I had no idea. I was even remember that that tape was there, but, um, I, uh, I plugged the tape in and listened to Hank Parker's testimony. I didn't even know what a testimonial was, but a testimony. And, uh, and so Lake Havasu was instrumental. Terry got the tape from Hank, and it was coming out of Lake Havasu. Well, Havasu was that bad back then. Havasu now is amazing. It's big fish, lots of them, beautiful clean water. It is one of those lakes, it, it, you know, if you get an opportunity to fish it, you need to go. If you if if your tour is having one there, or you're just... Are you just, uh, yep, that's probably true. There goes Chuck going. Aaron Martin's won that Havasu tournament. He won the one that we fished recently, the big one, and he mashed them, and, uh, and what, a, what a great win that was. So, yeah, the um, I can tell you that Havasu's amazing. I had another one ask me about my thumbs. They're still terrible, and that I'm, I'm going to probably end up having surgery on that. Uh, Eddie says, what's your favorite Tennessee lake? And, um, you know, I, I don't know that I, I have one that's like jumping out, but I'm going to say Chickamauga. I've had, you know, I had a really good tournament there a, a few years back and I really like it. So, um, we're a little late for what I like to do. You know, I like going there in the springtime when you can, when you can look at them or maybe just after the springtime post spawn. this will be way after post spawn, So there'll be a lot of ledge fish, a lot of drop offs. And, and, uh, and so that's going to be fun, but I'm looking forward to that. Um, Let's see what else I got. Uh, who do you think some of the rising stars of the sport? Man, do we have some great ones. I mean, Dustin Cannell. I mean, it, it just goes on and on and on of these young guys that, you know, come out of college. They, they, they're they high school fishermen. Then they go to, you know, to college, and they're fishing all the time. They get their education. They come out of college, and they go in, and they start just mashing you on tour. So I, I think we have a, a tremendous group of youngsters that just keep coming out and keep putting the pressure on them. Um, you know, I'm, I'm one of the old guys. I'm proud to still be out there and still make an occasional check and all that kind of stuff. Um, I, you know, I never was as good as, as, you know, guys like, uh, Rick Clun or Denny Brower. Those guys were amazing. Larry Nixon, you know, they were just like the best of the best. I, I was, you know, I was okay. I caught fish and, and, and did good ones, a lot of tournaments and, and all, but those guys are exceptional. And when you see Rick Clun still doing it, 70, two-ish, I believe, 71, 72 -ish. I just sit back and go, that's amazing. I hope I live to 72. <laughs> so, anyway, but, but, uh, anyway, I hope I'm actually going for 74 because then I'll be married to my wife for 50 years. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Anyway, um, what does fun fishing look like when you're not in your tournament mode? All right, here's what it is. And I, I just finished spooling up a, a, a reel, uh, I just put 50, da 50 pound, um, uh, cigar thread lock on a, a reel and I'm going snapper fishing, red snapper in the morning. And I'm going to go, uh, probably catch a few grouper, maybe a cobia. We don't know. But so my fun fishing is taking grandson who's was listening to this Bryce and, um, uh, and Bryce will go and we'll go snook fishing. We'll go red fishing. Uh, but we go fishing and we go bass fishing. Trust me, we go bass fishing too. So fun fishing, and that's what happens as you get older and you become 
a grandfather, it's not about what you do. In other words, I used to bow hunt and, you know, my Matthews and me went a lot of places and did a lot of bow hunting. And I don't get to do that anymore. And I'm okay with that because I get to hunt. And instead of dragging my Matthews bow and go hunting, I now drag my grandson and he brings a rifle and we go hunting. Or he got a shotgun and we go duck hunting because my son loves it. So a lot of what I experience now is sharing what I've learned and what some of the special times I've had is sharing them with the next generation, with my grandson. And I have uh, two granddaughters. <clears throat> One's about, not quite, she'll be two in September. And uh, another one that's three, she'll be actually four in February. So she turned three. And so that'll be a, the next step is taking them and teaching them um, about fishing and hunting and the outdoors and, and the respect that you have for, for all that. So uh, that's something we don't ever want to lose. And so uh, just saying that, yeah, so that's what my fun fishing looks like right now. So um, it, uh, it's still wonderful. I mean, it's absolutely wonderful. I can tell you, I'm, I, I feel so blessed to not only to, you know, be a part of the, of the Christian family, but to make a living fishing. You can't be more blessed than that. To go doing something you truly love and make a living doing it, there, it's just nothing better. And, and so I've been blessed beyond belief. Um, and like most people, don't deserve it. And yet... He has blessed me greatly, and I will always, always tell you how awesome Jesus Christ is, because he is. And I can also tell you that here's 100% truth. If you've never experienced Christ personally, here's the truth. The truth is he is alive. He's not only alive, he's here with us right now on this call. He's listening. He's there. He's a part of it. He's a part of you. He is alive, and the reason I know that is because he has affected me. He's touched me personally so many times, so many times where I know it's him touching me, sending the little old man to the boat at that tournament that saved me in the heart issue, uh, you know, changing medications, putting a person on an airplane next to me, all the things that happen, prayers being answered, uh, little cool stuff. I mean, I didn't even get to tell you this one. That's just one of the ones that I just love, but my, my son, uh, hunting and he's, he's, he's up in a stand and I'm down in a stand next, you know, 70, I'm a hundred yards from him, but I'm 70 yards from a crossing. I got my buddy Doug Odom with me. He's got a video camera. He's going to get me shooting one with my bow and he's going to take me while well, my son's in the deal. And we're texting back and forth. And he says, you know, three doughs heading your way. And I was hoping to get a dough because I like burgers and I like venison burgers a lot. So I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, and I'm getting ready and my arrow's ready. And I'm sitting there all looking. And I'm waiting, waiting, waiting. I don't see anything. And next thing I, my phone buzzes and you ease your hand ever so slowly down there and look at the text. He goes, two more. And I went, Oh yeah, they're heading my way. So I'm all, all, all just, I'm all excited going, I'm getting ready to, to, uh, to shoot a doe. And all of a sudden I hear this smack and I turn around and here is this big old buck laid out in the, in the, at the crossing. And my son has just shot him. And anyway, I, I run down there, look it up and I'm, I'm like, come on, y'all, you guys, see if, you know, I get down there. He, he actually spined it, but he, it looked quicker than William Tell. He like toop, one more, toop, another arrow and that one hearted it and it was done. So it was amazing how fast he could shoot an arrow and shoot it accurately. And, um, so I, I go down there, I see this deer and I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is a great deer for South Carolina. Big old buck, almost a 120. I think it was a 117 or 118. Uh, anyway, so for his first rack buck, it was incredible. So it, and especially with a bow. And so I, I run to the, to the tree and he's not come down the tree yet. He's just kind of working his way down. I said, man, you, you come on down. You got to see this. He said, dad, dad, I got to tell you something. And I said, no, dad, tell me later. You got to come down here and look at this. this all, I'm just all excited, which I get. And he said, dad, stop. And I go, what? He says, I got to tell you this. 
He said, you know, those deer were heading your way and I've been hunting for, you know, how many years and I never see a rack buck. He said, he said, I bowed my head and I said, Lord, just let me see a, a rack buck. He said, I opened my eyes and looked up and there he was. So you tell me that we don't serve an incredible God that does things like that for a young man and says, I'm real. So all of these stories, no fudging, no embellishments, no nothing. God is awesome. And Jesus Christ is our connection straight to God, except Jesus Christ. And that's that your life will never be the same. It's the best thing to ever happen to you. Anyway, thank you very much, guys. I don't know. Um, I haven't looked at timing or how much. I don't know anything about. Uh, I really didn't get much direction. Just come share. And I'm like, I love talking. And I especially love talking about Jesus Christ. And uh, so I don't know. If, you know, Danny, am I supposed to uh, go? Or did I go too short or too long? I don't know. But one thing I can tell you is I love Jesus. And, and I appreciate y'all. I, I love fishing. I love my family. I love Jesus. Love Terry Chup, man. He's uh, he's there and there's Rick comes in. Dude, it's good to see you now. Rick Pierce, owner of Bass Cat, um, you know, and and uh, good man. So uh, I, I'm I'm on the very end there, Rick. But I appreciate you coming in and and uh, and I love all you guys. So uh, I, I I wish you a blessed blessed evening, a blessed week. And, um, and thanks to Fishers Men because it's a great tour, man. They, they've just done great things for many, many years and shared the gospel and, and the truth. And that's, that's the deal is the truth. And the truth is, is that Jesus is incredible. God is amazing. And the most important thing, he loves you. He loves you no matter what. And that's what's special. And uh, once you figure that out and you accept him, man. It's the best, simply the best. So thank you guys, and uh, and y'all have a, a blessed evening and, and uh, a blessed rest of the week. So I uh, appreciate it, and uh, I will, uh, I, you know, I'll be, you can check me just about any time on Shaw Grigsby fan page and Shaw Grigsby Facebook page and Shaw Grigsby on everything. And so uh, appreciate you guys, and Desiree, it's great to see you on here too. And uh, so appreciate all you guys and, uh, and the best to all y'all. So thank you and uh, good night. And God bless.